All right, look at the pressures. We're looking at pressure. So our high side pressure, you can see where that is. Uh, that little space was where the uh, gauge is turned off for battery saving mode right there at around 150. Uh, engine's getting hotter. You look at that low side pressure around 30 right there and it says 30 right across at idle, roughly 750 RPMs. So let's, um, let's raise the RPMs because you know there's those guys who uh, try to get more refrigerant in there when they're tanked or when they have the little can and it freezes up and they can't get no more refrigerant in. They say, I'm gonna raise the RPMs because that's gonna lower the low side so it'll suck in more refrigerant. Or then you have those other guys who have that other method of uh, charging. They go, well, I'm going to raise the RPMs because I'm going to raise the high side pressure. So uh, I'm going to just keep pumping in refrigerant until I get a certain high side pressure. So let's let's go up to 2,000 RPMs and see if I could get this all in frame here. See the RPMs. Oops, a little too much. Let's get around 2,000 RPMs. And somewhere right around there and we'll just hold it steady right around there if we can hold it steady I'm having a hard time getting it to stay steady I'm trying there somewhere around there now look at that high side you only see the little blip where I went up almost to 3,000 rpms and it jumped up look at the low side Anything happening? Is it going lower? Is it going to suck in any more refrigerant out of that frosted up little can? Raise the RPMs to 2,000 RPMs. Nothing's happening. How about that high side? We're going to keep on jamming in refrigerant and we raise the RPMs and that's going to do something. Well, I don't think so, buddy. Let's go to 3,000 RPMs and see what happens. Okay, come on right about there. A little too high, but that's okay. We're just trying to make comparisons. What's well, 3,000 RPMs? Eventually, the, the fan's going to kick in for the engine coolant temperature going up, and you're going to see the high side take a big dump when the fans go 100%. Right now, the fans are uh, just maintaining. I can't maintain. Come on, give me 3,000 RPMs. Give me 3,000. Oh, the car's taking over. I, I'm giving it more gas, and nothing's happening. That's it. The computer take, uh, has just taken over. And will not let me do 3,000. I got it floored and nothing's happening. So, uh, and now the computer's taking over. Oh, there goes the fan. So that is the fan for the coolant going high. The fan's at 100% high speed right now. I have it floored or I have it floored and it cut off the compressor. If these meet and match and don't steady out, that's the engine, uh, the computer taking the compressor offline nope it didn't take out there's the fan just shut off that's what it was that was the fan for the engine cooling temperature taking over now look where our uh, pressures are our fan is at hundred percent we're at 2500 rpms and we're right around 90 psi 90 100 so we're about hundred psi if you look at the 90 mark and you come over we're just above that we're at 100 psi and our low side is probably about 40 psi oh i could touch it i forgot 43 psi and our high side is 101 psi because our fan is on because of coolant temperature, so the fan is high, artificially lowering the pressure over the condenser, cooling off the compressor more. So let me let it go back to idle, cool off the coolant. There it goes. That's me letting back off. See that control? You see how that works? All that time it maintained cooling, but you gave it more RPMs and the high side went down. And you gave it more RPMs and the low side went up. Now we're back to idle. And now it's gonna take a while to compensate and do its thing. It's trying to get back to where it was before. And our low side is back to where it was. 
and it's gonna take a while, probably another minute or two for it's gonna take over and then it'll adjust and it'll bring it back down to 150 eventually. But as you can see, raising the RPMs, trying to force in more refrigerant or obtain a high side, doesn't do it on this vehicle. It acts exactly in the opposite. More RPMs, high side went down. More RPMs, low side went up. Idle, idle right now in a few more minutes. There it goes, it's jumping back. Watch it. I'm not doing nothing. If you see the idle is still there, my foot is off the pedals. It's just taking over and doing its thing and it'll eventually steady out and become like it was over here. Total computer operation. So somebody trying to raise idle and forcing cans and trying to obtain a certain high side pressure when the computer is taking over and changing that displacement of the compressor. Now, if I was one of those guys who believes in raising the RPMs and looking for a certain high side pressure I wanted 150 say up here 180 but I was raising the RPMs and I kept forcing in cans of refrigerant but the computer is taking over and artificially lowering the pressure one of those kind of guys who do that kind of thing how many cans can they get in there before they force it up to 180 psi but look at the low side always stays about the same food for thought that's how this vehicle this year make model operates like this now I've showed you other variable displacement compressors that do rise in the high side but the low side stays exactly level but you raise rpms and the high side goes up on some variable displacement compressors then I have shown you other systems on variable displacement systems where you raise the rpms up to 2000 rpms the high side stays perfectly level, doesn't move at all, but the low side takes a dive. Then I have shown you other variable displacement compressors from manufacturers where the low side goes up when you raise RPMs. And the high side, every combination that you can possibly think of, I have done videos in the past showing you that the um, pressures will go all over the place, no matter what. It's year, make, model, vehicle specific, and unfortunately, all the manufacturers don't give us the information that we need to have. Uh, our actual superheat, 6.4, subcooling, 38, and a lot of guys out there in commercial or, or uh, residential go, oh my God, 38 uh, subcooling, you're way overcharged. No, that's exactly what this vehicle calls for, and under these conditions, this is how it operates. Let's get the RPM. Let's take a look at all what did I I don't think I uh I did not record superheat subcooling so we could watch it when our Yes, yes I did. Not it went wonky when I was way up there in RPMs, tried to recover, and here we are back again. Six and thirty-six, six and thirty-six on this vehicle and you've seen other vehicles where subcooling was only eight other vehicles it's near zero other vehicles it's floating around 13 different year make model vehicles no rule of thumb stop trying to look for rules of thumbs on modern vehicles nowadays guys you have to learn the year make model vehicle and if you do a couple hundred of them you start noticing patterns and then you can start using a rule of thumb for only that manufacturer's AC system for that year in particular model vehicle. Because on that same year, on one of their other models, they might be doing something totally different. Because the manufacturers buy the AC systems from other countries, uh, other companies that put them in the vehicles, and then they make them operate the way they want them to operate. No more rules of thumb, guys. See you later.